Hey there, fellow writers. Did you know that the way you structure your story can have a mind-blowing impact on your reader? Well, stick around, because I am going to dig into the world of the three-act story structure, which is a game-changer for every writer. Last week's video was about outlining, and if you haven't watched that video, I'll put a link in the description. But this is a continuation, because when you are looking at starting your story, creating your outline, one of the things that you want to keep in mind is how you are going to structure your story. And the three-act structure is one of the best ways to do that. There are other types of story structure, such as Save the Cat or The Hero's Journey, but the three-act story structure is foundational, and it has been well used, and it's been around for centuries, and so it's a really good place to start to learn about story structure. One common struggle that many writers have is how to structure the story to have the greatest impact on the reader. Now, without a roadmap, then you just don't know where the story is going to go. And one of the things that the three-act story structure can do is give you the basic roadmap of where the story is going so that you can make your story so much more. You may be wondering, what is this three-act story structure? Well, it has three acts. Act one is the setup, act two is the confrontation, and act three is the resolution. Now, these things have a certain amount of space in a story. For example, act one is the first 25% of your story. Act two takes up the most space at 50% of your story, and then act three is another 25% of your story. Each act has certain elements that need to be in them. And in Act 1, Act 1, you're setting the stage for the story. Introduce your characters. What are their goals? What are their fears? What's their internal conflict? What's the external conflict? What is the environment like? You also can use the first act to, ex to set things up. For example, if you have rules for your story, which every story does, for example, if you have your main character who is afraid of snakes, your character remains afraid of snakes throughout the story. That may be one of your character's character arcs, that they overcome their fear of snakes, whatever that is, but, but whatever rules you set up in Act 1 stay consistent with whatever you've established. You also want to use the first act to set the tone of the story. So if you are writing a really intense story, that's got a lot of intense things happening, and your first act is really mellow and calm, then you're not fulfilling your obligation to the reader by setting the tone of the story. So make sure that whatever type of story you're writing, that that is represented in the first act. Another thing to keep in mind with act one is that you want to trickle the information. You do not want to make it an information dump. You want to have just enough to get them curious and to keep them reading, but you don't want to tell them everything in the first act. The first act also contains the hook and the inciting incident, and so I've made videos about those two things. I will put the links in the description so you can check those out. In Act 1, you are establishing the normal life of your main character. What is their daily life like? You establish that. And by the end of Act 1, you are going to crush their normal life. You're going to push them out of their comfort zone, and that's what propels them out of the first act and into Act 2. My example for talking about the three-act story structure is one of my favorite movies, Jurassic Park. Most people have seen it. If you haven't seen it, now is your opportunity, and you can look at all the parts of a three-act story. Act one in Jurassic Park is very character-driven. It sets the stage for the story, and you can look at act one, and you can see where act one changes and transitions to act two is that point when they're on the island, 
and they see the dinosaurs for the first time. It's these great big brontosauruses, and they get out of the vehicle, and they're just in awe, and it's like this high point. They're so excited that they're there. But if we back up from that point, we can look at the hook and the inciting incident in Jurassic Park. Now, the hook in Jurassic Park is at the very beginning, when the workers are on the island, and they have this box. And we know that the story's going to be about dinosaurs, because we've seen the movie trailer, or we've seen the picture. We know there's going to be dinosaurs. But the box, the box doesn't let us see the dinosaur. So they move the box, and they get it to where they're getting it into the enclosure. And then something happens, and the worker gets drug in there and gets eaten. Whew. It, it sets the tone for the story, because we know that people are going to get eaten, and it's kind of ominous, but we really don't know what's going to happen, and it hooks us in. And then if you move a little farther forward, the inciting incident in Jurassic Park is when Hammond comes to the dig site in his helicopter and stirs everything up in this great and grand entrance of Hammond, and Hammond invites the two scientists to come to the island and see what he's done. And they have a choice. They have a choice to choose whether they are going to step out of their comfort zone, because remember, your inciting incident should push your character out of their comfort zone, and it's a choice point. They can choose to do it, or they can choose not to and stay. And they decide to take that step, and they go to the island. If you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe and hit that bell notification so you don't miss any future videos. Act two is where the story really unfolds. This is where you have the plot twists and you build. And so act two is a slow build of wins and losses, struggles, that they overcome, and then things that they don't overcome, and it's a series of events that build. You're also going to introduce your antagonist, usually in the second act. You are the tension in the story is slowly getting more and more. The conflict should get more and more. You have plot twists, you have rising action, you have the midpoint, which is pretty much the middle of the story. But at the midpoint is the peak, and then it, and then it, and then things really escalate, headed into the third act. This is also where you would add foreshadowing of what is to come, and build the tension. For example, with the character who's afraid of snakes, they can continue to have encounters, random encounters with snakes, and having them having to overcome that, and you build that tension by using foreshadowing. Act two is usually the hardest to write and to get through because often you can, you, you know where to start. You start the story, you get going, it's exciting. And then everything in between the act one and act three is building. And so you want to keep this in mind. Keep the story moving. And if you get stuck in act two, ask yourself some questions. How can I move the story forward? How can, what can go wrong? If everything can go wrong, what can go wrong? What happens if everything goes wrong? And that will help build your conflict and your tension and move the story forward. The moment of transition between act two and act three is often called the dark night of the soul. It is also the lowest point for your character. It is the point where the character feels like they're never going to win this. They are facing defeat. They are at their lowest, lowest point and discouragement, and they're never going to make it. Act two in Jurassic Park really is a series of events laying out the information leading us to the midpoint of Act 2. And the midpoint of Act 2 is you have these characters in these jeeps, and the T-Rex gets out of his enclosure. And that is the midpoint of Jurassic Park, and it spirals the story into their fight to survive. So the first, from the, from the beginning of the story to the midpoint, is their journey to get to the island and their awe at all these dinosaurs that they're seeing. And from the midpoint on is their journey to survive the island and get off. Act three 
is where we get to the climax. It is the peak of your story. It's where the uh, main character overcomes what they didn't think they could overcome, and they win the day, and they survive whatever monumental thing they've had to face that they didn't think they could do. It's called the climax. And once you get past the climax, this is actually where you would resolve the inciting incident and you would have resolution to any of your loose ends starting from the climax going into your falling action. The highest level of tension in your story should be in act three. Use act three to show how your character has grown and the impact of the events of the story on your character. Act three of Jurassic Park has the climax and you have all these events that have led to this and you have Alan and the kids and Ellie and you have them and they're facing off with the raptors and they don't know if they're gonna live and they're, there's lots of screaming and they're running and trying to get away from these raptors and keep from getting eaten. And at, at that point, you just don't think they're gonna survive and the raptors are closing in and the T-Rex comes in and kills the raptors and you have this aha moment that these animals are not gonna be controlled by people and they run away. That's the climax and then the rest of the film is the resolution and the falling action. The next time you watch Jurassic Park, pay attention to the three act story structure and see if you can pinpoint all of the different places in the story that follows the three act story structure. Mastering the three act story structure has many benefits. It helps you create a story that engages your audience, keeps them engaged, and gives them a satisfying ending with predictable results that your reader doesn't want to stop reading. Use the three act story structure to take your ideas for your story and put them into a cohesive outline or a roadmap so you know where your story's going and you have a plan. And the three act story structure will give you that plan. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.